There we go. What is that? Are we live? Yeah, we're live. We're on. Oh, wow. I I just caught the gist of that. Yeah. Oh, man. Man, that rubs me the wrong way. That rubs me some kind of way. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Hey, live stream, everybody. We Hello. haven't started yet. <laughs> Joey and I just got very upset with something that he showed me on Instagram. On our other podcast. Man. Hey. Good grief. Let me check and make sure the live stream's actually working, that we're there. Yep. Okay. Good deal. Okay, we're ready. We're going to start this thing. Ooh. Ain't too quick. I got to hit the record button. God, I, help me remember to do all these did things. Did we do that last one? Yeah, because I was watching the timer. Oh. Okay, cool. Now we're good to go. Hey, everybody. I'm Brian. Uh, I'm Joey. Welcome to the Maryland Fishing Line, episode 1515. Feels like we've been doing this for a while now, Joey. This is awesome. This is awesome. We've been doing it for two years, but that was the other one. It's uh, <laughs> sept- <laughs> Today is Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. This is the podcast where we talk about fishing throughout the great state of Maryland. The Maryland Fishing Line is a production of the Angler Magazine Chesapeake Edition. And don't we have a latest copy of it right there behind you? Show everybody what the magazine looks like so you can start looking for that on your new stand of choice. We're in liquor stores and gas stations all across everywhere. <laughs> Chesapeake Angler can be found throughout southern Maryland, Anne Arundel County, and the eastern shore. If you would like to see it in your area and it's not there, let us know. We just like last week, dude, we have got a lot to talk about for our, our time. I, I didn't do any bike stuff. Yeah, that's my job. But but we fish like crazy uh, this last fish week. Fish like crazy. I worked on a lot of fishing kayaks. It's been yeah. Got some content. Man, we got some stuff to talk about. Had a great day yesterday. But before we get into all of that, let's take a real quick look at what's going on around the state. Ah, so striped bass are back on the menu. Striped bass season is back open and on. And just like last week, the other things that's going on around the state, the spot, the white perch, Spanish mackerel, and the puppy drum are taking the spotlight right now from everybody. In particular, Joey, what's going on with striped bass? Oh. Um, oh, are you there yet? No. You joined me yet? I was. <laughs> do you want me to go ahead and sorry, do that? I was <laughs> looking at the, uh, I pulled up the mic one. <laughs> I, watched some, I was watching some dude who flipped the solo skiff. Um, <laughs> and then I went to the bike one. Well, I'll go uh, ahead. Striped bass. Okay, sorry, there you go. You're on go. it. <laughs> <laughs> All, uh, we are back open. Uh, we are at uh, one fish per person per day at a minimum size of one nine inches. So that's pretty easy. Um, trying, to, <laughs> trying to keep things regulated. Um, anglers must use non offset circle hooks when live lining or chumming. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Anglers it's must use pie. Circle, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> circle hooks or J hooks when. Uh, Fishing crabs or worms as bait when using uh, processed bait. You know, I read or that. What's you? a processed bait? Corn what dog. <laughs> <laughs> Some of your garlic corn where you process it. Maybe, uh, does that count like is gulp and stuff like that count as a processed bait? Is a processed that's that's an interesting question. I don't, I don't know the answer. Dough balls. I don't know. Legitimately processed. I don't know. So bluefish are still around. Um, not a whole uh, lot yeah, changed yeah, with yeah. the bluefish from last week. They're, they're schooled up and breaking surface, uh, chasing bait all over the main stem of the bay. Toss some metal spoons, some jigs into the mix to hook up with that. But keep in mind, folks, that you will get broken off. Those teeth will go right through whatever you throw at you got them. metal eaters? Yep. So either do that or be ready with a fresh rig. That's really the right thing to do. Yeah, six Because they'll, they'll go through that, the metal eater, too. Yeah. They get it right. Uh, the cobia. Um it's kind of cooling off, and it uh, looks like they're finally moving back down south to Virginia, where yeah. they used to only come up to. Yeah. Um, but yeah. people are still catching them. Just, uh, a just got to hop across the line. Yeah. Uh, look for larger red drum under schools of breaking bluefish and Spanish mackerel. And big soft plastics and jigs are your best bet for that catch and release fun. And we're going to talk sort of a lot about puppy drum scene because that's what we oh, did yeah. all day yesterday. So I'll leave that for our conversation a little bit later. The uh, speckled trout are still f- spread uh, pretty pretty decently throughout the region. Um, the best action for some decent sized ones is on the eastern side of the bay. Um, light colored plastics um, near you know prominent points, marsh edges, creek mouths, um, pulling them out of grass and the weed beds is producing. Great catch. That's um. I actually got into a couple of specs yesterday. 
I don't know if we talked about that. So I don't even I told you I caught them. They were tiny. They've got a couple of tiny ones right outside my house. They were like tiny. One of them I didn't even know it was there. Uh, Spanish mackerel have moved solidly into the middle bay. Anglers can expect them to find them along the edges of the shipping channel, almost up to the Bay Bridge. The both of the bleh, bleh, bleh. God. the bulk of the action is from the mouth of the Severn and Severn River and Poplar Island. South trolling number one drone and Clark spoons in gold behind number one and number two planers or heavy inline weights at about seven knots. So basically you could put a jet skier on the boat too. You could jet ski, you could like <laughs> water ski and you could fish for Spanish mackerel at the same time. Again, channel edges are amongst the best places to explore. Um, make sure if you're going to actually find those uh, breaking fish, don't run your boat right through the center of the school of breaking Charter captains fish. do that, though. <laughs> Steer on those edges, um, and and those seagulls uh, will always t- give it away. And that's I, you know, just don't do that. Don't be that guy. Don't mm. be that guy that runs right through, or gal that, that runs right through the school of breaking fish. Um, white perch in spot. Um, white perch can be found casting beetle spins with spinners or similar gear or small clousers near shore uh, shoreline structure. Uh, fishing off a dock or a pier is another way to uh, popular way to fish for white perch, and no casting is involved. The perch are usually tight to the dock piers. Mm-hmm. I found that yesterday. Yep. Uh, graft shrimp or pieces of bloodworms on a simple bottom rig makes the perfect setup. Excuse me. Uh, bottom fishing for a mix of spot and white perch has been excellent in the lower production river. Uh, the Cornfield Harbor area of Tan- no Cornfield Harbor, sorry. Um, Tangier Sound and Lower Hooper's Island are all great places to get in on the action. Now, I have heard some folks catching some croaker up to getting close to 12 inches in the creeks off of the Patuxent, and the, the fellow that I heard that from is me. I was like, oh, I see. Because <laughs> <laughs> then your neighbor, uh, Luke, just posted, uh, saw his advertisement with a oh, huge did he? croaker. Yeah, thought I thought it was a little puppy drum. I, I caught a couple of croaker the night that I went out. Um, that Joe, the, You didn't come out, and Jerry said it was too hot. Like I did the night before. The night before, did you I actually said go out, or did he not actually? Sh- no, he didn't show up that night. We, we went oh. out the night the night after that. I thought he got down there in his truck and was like, oh, "It's too hot." No, no, I don't oh. think he got. But I had a couple of, and you know, when you're when you're pulling them in, it, it looks like a big old puppy drum down yeah. there, like a big fat chunky puppy drum. But they were really some nice sized croaker. Yeah. So uh, the large mouth, which Brian's back to large kitchen age. again. Um, they're still continuing their summer pattern of feeding in the showers at night. And they get lazy during the day and kind of sit in the cool, shady parts of the of the bodies of water. Um, I don't even know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of tapered off. Uh, working the shallow... That Instagram post really upset me. I know. That's what that I'm thinking about. Got me. Working the shallow grass areas during the early morning hours or late evenings is the best bet. Um, Tapwata lures is one of the best ways to work these shallow and grassy areas. Uh, frogs, buzz baits are also good choices. You, you throw buzz bait a lot when you no, freshwater. I don't even know if I own one anymore. Yeah, I I, I don't used know to about half my lot. freshwater gear. I, I used to throw them a lot. I haven't thrown a buzz bait like like really worked a buzz bait in a long time. Maybe that's what uh, I need to be throwing maybe, in the grass. So my dad, my dad's always been big spinner bait and has some buzz baits. I got spinner baits. Is what I caught fish today. Anyway, yeah. snakeheads are going to be encountered in the same areas as largemouth, especially in the tidal creeks of the Lower Potomac and Nanticoke rivers. And the lowered eastern shore. When targeting them, though, a big old white paddle tail rigged weedless can be deadly. Worked close to the surface and through or near the grass or fallen branches and brush. I got a couple of those in my box. I don't know that I've ever had much success with them. Maybe yeah, I should give them a try. Yeah, I paddle tail. Crap ton of paddle tails. Yeah, I got. I got. No, I'm not. I'm talking about specifically for snakehead. I mean, I'll throw them out oh. for for striper. I'll throw. I'll throw striper. Yeah, for striper. I'll throw them out for a little uh, specks and reds. Yeah. Catfish, um, for all those who aren't aware, they're everywhere. <laughs> uh, it's a Susquehanna is low due to limited flow from Conowingo, uh, allowing anglers to fish unexplored waters from shore, mm. which that's fun sometimes. Uh, yeah, don't slip. Great blue uh, channel and flathead catfishing can go on. Um, soak some cut bait or clam snouts. Sounds <laughs> disgusting. Uh, blue catfish, <laughs> catfish in general, everything about them is gross. But <laughs> what they eat them, but what they look eat. like. Um, <laughs> yeah, until you cut them open. <laughs> blue catfish are spread throughout the upper bay and the tidal rivers. The Chester River holds the greatest concentration of blue catfish at this time. 
in the area from Cheshire Town up past Crumpton are great places to fish for them. Fresh cut baits from Gizzard Shad or White Perch tend to be the easiest bait to acquire. Channel catfish can be found in excellent numbers in all the tidal rivers as well as in and out of the bay. Now, I can uh, oh, I yeah. can um, testify to the next section on crabs. Crabs are coming into the best time of the year. I slayed them last week, dude. I legit like probably had 90 crabs last week. Like legit. I heard you had 90 crab pots, too. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty. No, no, no. Um, razor clams remain the bait of choice when trot lining or crabbing with collapsible traps. Some of the best crab catches are coming from the deeper waters in the tidal rivers. The shallower areas have a lot of small crabs, which will chew up those baits, and the sooks are beginning to be on the move. I, I've caught a lot of females, a lot of little fat females in the last, I guess, I've fished the pots twice this week. And, yeah, I'm dumping a lot of little females back in the water. There's going to be a major shed coming up in the next few weeks, and catches of large crabs will be something to look forward to in September once they fatten up. Crabs and football. But we ain't going to get football this year, are we? Um, in the middle of something today, I saw the schedule. They're going to actually play football? I don't know. I, I, don't pay I, usually, I haven't stuff. watched football in years. I don't, I don't pay any attention to it either. I was just the whole line from the Vince Vaughn movie with, uh, you know, Crabs and football. It's what Maryland. They, they show that at the beginning. They'll, I would go to Maryland football games. The, the Vince Vaughn movie, um, Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers? Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're in Maryland. Yeah. And yeah. it's like crabs and football, something Maryland does or something. They would always show that at the beginning of Maryland football games. Um, Joey, have you heard there has been a new state fishing record set for Sheep's Head? Had Not you until heard I that? read this and you yeah, asked you me go. yesterday about Sheep's Head. Uh, yeah, a Dorchester County resident has officially been recognized by the Maryland Department of Natural Resources for a new state fishing record, Chesapeake Bay Division for Sheep's Head. Uh, Daniel Mastronardi Jr. caught a 14.1 pound record breaking fish at around noon on August 9th in the lower bay with peeler crab for bait in about 15 feet of water near the target ship. Uh, his catch broke the 13.73 pound record that was set only three years prior by deal resident Dave Alberg. Uh, he was targeting speckled trout and striped bass, and his catch came, he said, unexpectedly. You really had no idea what he had on the line. A uh, 14.1. Oh, sheep's head. I was going to say, was he targeting striped bass when they weren't supposed to be no, targeting striped no, bass? No, no, <laughs> no. That was, it was, right. they're always behind with these things, so. Um, he immediately called a family member to check the state records and there it was the, the sheep's head. The weight was confirmed by Mark Cropper of cool ice and seafood company in Cambridge. And we actually got a request this week to kind of talk about sheep's head fishing. And that's why the other day I asked you, Joey, I said, Hey, Joey, you know anything about sheep's head? <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't know a thing about sheep's head. So, no, uh, I don't even want to BS it. Cause the, I don't. No, no. The, uh, the, the request just came yesterday, so I think I'll do my homework, talk to some people, see if we can find out how to do the whole sheep's head thing, yeah. and then we'll try to go over that even though I have no experience. I do know how to Google mm-hmm. and do my research and do my homework <laughs> and find reliable sources and put together a good tale. So we'll do that next week. We'll have some inside baseball on how to catch a sheep's head. Ah. Can, do you eat those? I don't know. I don't know anything about sheep. I don't know you much either. I've caught them. You can eat anything, really. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to eat carp. <laughs> well, you uh, could. But you could. I've seen people take them to eat them. I don't yeah, know why. Um, catching up on YouTube, we just closed out our August giveaway. giveaway and I have got a winner to announce. A winner? A winner. Winner chicken dinner. Laura Downey from Elkridge, Maryland is the big winner. And I am going to be contacting you, Laura, via email to let you know how we're going to get your e-gift card to Bass Pro Shops for $25 in your hands. You may actually want to wait until after Christmas to spend it when they actually have some stock possibly in the store. Have you seen that Walmart's doing a lot of, like, clearance stuff now? Walmart always have clearance? No, I, I think this time of year they're, like, clearing out stuff. I have seen... More posts on Reddit in all the fishing subreddits mm-hmm. for people like displaying tabletops full of their Walmart haul. And you look on the little yeah. clearance stickers, and it'll be like a like a KBD spinnerbait that's like five or six bucks. It'll be like a dollar five or something stupid like that. I want to well, get in on the, some of that action. So if anybody knows where a Walmart's clearing out, we've seen some of the um, people that like have Walmart pay them money for coupons and stuff. No, I've never seen that. Are oh, you talking about the pe- super couponers? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Do you do that? 
I don't do no, that. I don't do but that. then you go to their house, and their house is like full of oh, Listerine and <laughs> toothpaste and all. Other people of have all the stuff. toilet paper during hey, the pandemics, folks. Yeah, it's true. There's people you want to go see. Yeah. The September issue of Chesapeake Angler is out. Look for it. Um, I'm going to start distribution tomorrow. I just got them uh, my shipment a couple of days ago. Uh, if you would like to see, hey, open that up to the brag board there, Joey. If you want to see your your catch in print, send your pictures to the angler chesapeake at gmail.com. Make sure to include a byline that you have attached a high resolution image suitable for printing. If you send them from your phone, make sure to send the largest file size possible. I'm going to put that the brag board on uh, some social places as well, yeah. Instagrams and um, all the other places, all the other places. But it's cool. I have people love to see it. a lot of kids, and so it's awesome. Like I said, just send your brag board photos to theanglerchesapeake at gmail.com and try to please make sure they're big enough to print. That'll be cool. What have you been up to this week, Joy? Uh, fishing. Been a lot of fishing. I fish Thursday night, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, maybe not Saturday morning. No, you fish Sunday morning. No, you fish Definitely Sunday morning. I fish Sunday morning. I fish Monday. I'm going to fish tomorrow. <laughs> My wife might divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> you fish it tomorrow night or tomorrow morning? Tomorrow afternoon, my friend Tony. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Yeah. Um, who is, um, he used to be the executive director for CCA Maryland. Yeah. Um, but they parted ways. Now he runs a big part of the American Saltwater Guides Association. Okay. We're one of the biggest conservation groups in the country right now. Working to keep our fisheries rolling, but he's coming down. He wants to send some of that puppy drum action. Well, dude, it's it's like you're you're working when you're out fishing yeah. like that. Well, he um, he's interested in a one of the bottom fights too. He's really uh. I'm um, looking at that, and I'll let them... What have I, you got left? Oh, I have nothing left. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you, you had those ones that you haven't come in, those natives. Oh, no, yeah. Those aren't spoken for. The, I think the natives are, but I'm going to let them try out my native, too, because we do have one of those coming yeah. at the Protection Adventure Center. At Pack Paddles. Uh, Pack Paddles. Um, actually, I have some cool news. I'll have to show you. There's a couple limited edition... There's a limited edition Bonafide SS-127, and... Um, Native Slayer X, they're doing a very similar. They're yeah. really cool. Yeah, um, they're kind of funky looking, but uh, he's like he wants a he wants a nice kayak to stand up on too. Um, mm. That's super stable. It's not bulky. He's got a he got rid of his truck, so he doesn't want something huge to tote around. Yeah, car topping. Yeah, he's <laughs> a huge fly fisherman. Um, that's a joke because there's, there's a guy called the huge fly fisherman. He <laughs> just mocks everything. It's awesome. <laughs> he's trying to take away that take away that snobbery, but um. What were we saying? I don't know what you were talking uh, about. Fishing, fishing a lot. <laughs> um, You've been fishing fishing's... a lot. Tony's coming down, and your body, and just my divorce. Yeah, just joking. <laughs> um, the uh, no, that's been it. Like I said, it's been my it's my getaway from the shop. Um, but I did yeah. uh, bike wise. But the, I did some paddle sports stuff last week. Um, I put a, I gotta show you the pictures. I put a boondocks landing gear on that one kayak that had no access. Yeah. Oh man, I had the. I was fishing wire and line. I had to pull the bolts through, tape the bolts. Oh, I hate that. Plate. I hate and that. And I reversed it. And it was like 400 measurements before drilling. And uh-huh. um, now that I've done it, I could probably do it in half hour. <laughs> now yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you want to make sure but you're I was doing, doing it right. Uh, Running the lines with the bullet weights and having to get all that oh, stuff Oh, I just through. used a coat hanger. That was way I, easier. I think magnets would work, too. If you got oh, like they a, do that in the bike. And, like, we do that for internal routing on the bikes. Yeah, I thought about that. I was like, why... Why are we struggling? Why don't we just get a big old like fifty pound magnet and get 50 that fifty pound magnet? No, like fifty pound pull. Strong. Fifty pound pull. <laughs> you know, their measure, magnets are measured by their pull. So you just put that big heavy magnet and and pull things to where you need them to be. You get a coat hanger. Yeah, it gives you know. some rigidity. To just... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just I was looking at watching how to, ways to do that, and it yeah. seemed like there were some better ways to do it. The, the nice thing is, Boondocks actually had a video for this boat. Like mm-hmm. they knew it was a problem. Mm-hmm. So I followed the video and just modified a couple things that I thought was necessary after installing these before. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. Um, but yeah, so it was it was a Pescador. I, don't know, I forgot who made that. It was a nice little kayak. Um, it reminded me a lot of your old town as far as the drive and the rudder and stuff. Okay, okay. Uh, very similar setup. It's like a uh, love-hate because the rudder's up top, and I think... I don't like that sometimes, but when it's down below, like mine and Jerry's, I feel like it's a place to break. Well, I hope you makes a nice little uh, thing Jerry uses. Well, like today, when I was over the ponds fishing and it's so full of hydrilla, mm-hmm. when I got into that thick hydrilla and I wanted to get through it, 
I was able to just pull the lever and swing the the rudder up, and it's oh. gone. So oh, I don't like that. Never. That. Yeah, my drive unit gets bad with that, but my rudder's never a problem. It's like when I'm moving okay. my kayak, I want to break it. Well, I mean, it's so it's streamlined. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's not, like my my rudder hangs way down, but my rudder also struggles to turn my boat. Oh, mine doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it sometimes doesn't want to go. <laughs> but yeah, I fished. Uh, Thursday in uh, Fish Solomon's, uh, Sunday morning in Solomon's. Um, I know you did well Sunday morning because you were sending me pictures Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I got out. Sunrise, I didn't realize sunrise was like 6, it's 6.36 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so you almost don't have to get up at nope. like, it's 4.30 anymore. The best part of this time of year. So try to get out just a little before 6, um, where I don't need full like lights to see well, where I, I'm going. But I, it's just enough daylight to... Yeah, I, I like it actually getting light or getting dark a little earlier, too, because mm-hmm. it seemed like if I was fishing an hour away, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. by the time you fish on the water, you're on the water till 9.15, oh, yeah. dude, like you're legit going getting home by the time it's like, you, you should be in bed. Oh, yeah. That's why I should be. Um, I, I, the struggle to get up is there, but I do prefer morning fishing. But when it's getting darker earlier, because uh, everyone knows I will fish an hour oh, after the sun yes, goes down. you do. Into the pitch black, but it's like eight forty now. It's not yeah. almost ten o'clock. Yeah, like it. I was in the summertime. Yep. Um, love. Yeah, I mean, right. Hate. It was right when I got out. I hit one of my little places right across the creek, and I caught two really nice, you know, like fifteen, sixteen inches, and they were fat. Like yeah. one of them was just like it was chunky. Never, oh yeah, chunky, and it had shoulders too. I thought it was the way it was. I thought it was a twenty incher. Um, I feel like once they get above like 12, 13 inches, they really get shoulders. So I, They're a I, blast. You told me about your little spot there, about how to get there, but I couldn't decipher tech oh. speak. And so oh, I, no, went somewhere, I went somewhere completely different. Yeah, but you caught fish, right? No. Oh. I, I went back up there and I was like, this cannot be the right spot. And so then I saw Jerry over on the other side of the creek. And I was like, oh, he, he's found it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I caught a couple right here. I'm like, yeah. all right. <laughs> they, uh, I caught some decent fish that morning. A lot of it perch, you can caught fish. It kind of died off. Um, so Jerry and I fished that night. Yeah, we went back out and fished that night. Oh, like crazy! I almost got hit multiple times out. Well, there. I was worried about that because Sunday night, but I, there wasn't as many people on the water yeah. Sunday night, it was especially the, uh, right when the sun set. There was nobody out there. There was nobody out there when the sun set um, after that hand came down, and we did okay. We did okay. Um, the night before. I could not get away from the to the rockfish. Oh um, yeah, I was legit trying to stay away from them, mm-hmm. and I was in that first little cove right there on Mill Creek, just where Mill Creek mm-hmm. kind of opens up, which is right across from the the fire tugs, the, the yeah. tugboats. No, spot that, burner. I, I don't care. It's my spot. I can That's burn my it. spot. It's my spot. I peed in that water. <laughs> you claimed it. You claimed I it. <laughs> no, so that's, that, that's been like a little honey hole. Yeah, that's been a nice that's, spot. That's where uh, Thursday night I caught a I caught another like sixteen or so. Uh, yeah. Chunky. No, uh, I got a. Uh, that's the one I told you with the GoPro. I didn't have, I didn't have the Brian technique. You know, <laughs> hold close, make fish look big. Um, you know, make but like as far giant. as yeah, but and I didn't have my GoPro settings. It yeah. and scale it bigger too. <laughs> um, I, had, I gave away all the. Secrets. I had a couple solid ones that I really like. They put up a good fight on that new rod and reel. Yeah, and um, yeah. I haven't been throwing my fly rod. It's that was really windy Thursday night. That's what it was. Remember that? Okay, you yeah, guys yeah. were gonna go, and it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it blowing in bad. my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, like, no, no, I'm that not going part, out there. That cove though, and some of the stuff over here was just dead calm. Well, you know what I like about that cove this time of year is it's in the shade early. You can actually sit in the shade when it's you know mm-hmm. full sun on the creek. That's actually a really um, nice little spot. I lost a really good fish there Sunday morning. It was one of the ones you you're not really sure if you have something at first. And then it gets closer and closer. You almost feel like you're uh, like caught up in something. Yeah. And then yeah, it took a hard turn and a huge run. Like I was like drag was screaming and just gone. You know what I, I found? We're talking specifically about puppy drum. Um, I have found you know because ever since the the KBF tournament, the the August tournament ended, I kind of have turned away from freshwater. We've been doing a lot of puppy drum. Yeah. And um, I have found it, it's a weird bite. It's very very subtle. You mm-hmm. don't, you don't, you'll feel the little tap, tap, taps of like the perch whacking mm-hmm. at a bait as you're pulling yeah. through the water. And then when the puppy drums on, it's almost like it just, it just get the bait gets heavy. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's a weird bite. And it's you start a, to learn, you start to feel the difference between, oh, that's a perch and that's a puppy drum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can definitely tell the difference. Uh, Do you want to talk about what we did yesterday? You want me to talk about that? No, I was just going to say, I um, I was about to pull, I told you, I was about to, I'm not going to talk too much in depth. I was about to pull a trigger and get, I finally sourced out all my yak power stuff. Okay. And then I found out I had an issue with my kayak. Oh. So before I figure out what's going on with that. Well, no, you need to look at it this way. If you get all that stuff and you got an issue with the boat and the boat's going to end up getting warrantied, yeah. you basically have a practice run. Oh, I'm not putting, I don't want them to like, <laughs> oh, you have holes all over it. Nope. <laughs> That's true. That's and true. with production, I don't know long, if they warranty my hole, how long I'll have it. So I might get one of the, just a yak attack, um, yeah. like track flag lights to hold in the meantime. Yeah. I, smart. I, I've, been, smart. I've been like drawing out how I want to put my my little lights everywhere. Um. So that's kind of put on hold. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for an email back to figure out how to proceed with that. So most of my kayak modifications are put on hold. Yeah. So that's smart. That's that's actually really smart to just kind of hold it and wait. Yeah, I was just getting excited. I got my little butt lights all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would have been really I kind cool. of figure out like wh- where I can put them out. to illuminate where they don't blind me and all pimped um, out in your glowing kayak sliding down like, the creek. <laughs> and the best striper fishing is coming up. Yeah, and it's usually you know it's the evening top waters and into the night, and the bigger fish start moving in the creeks, and there's a lot of good places around here, and so I'm just getting antsy. Well, I don't know. Was it Wednesday well, night or Thursday night that I came down here by myself? Um, I can't remember which. Was day it Thursday because I was. They that all was the run together. Night. They all run. It was probably Friday night then. I probably came. A down Friday when we were launching the skiff mm-hmm. and we saw you. Yeah, that was Friday. You got your truck towed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I got it back though. It's okay. Yeah. It's I told him put it back. Um, so that that was when I couldn't. I literally, legit, could not get away from the rockfish <laughs> up in that little cove. They were yeah. they were all over everything, and I, you know, I was trying to like they were they were up on the beaching. They were they were they were chasing bait fish up onto that little beach over there, mm-hmm. and I was legit trying to get away from them. But they would just they were going from one end of that cove to the other, and I felt bad. But I mean, well, I, like, I, hey, it's that fishing podcast guy. Let's get I, famous. No, I didn't even take them out of the water. I tried my best to keep the fish <laughs> in the water and get them unhooked really quick, but. Um, you know, it was only a couple of days before they opened back up anyway, so I figured open you know. the day. Yep, open today. Um, and then you and I went out with Jerry and Eric. Yep. Yesterday, that was like our first SOM, SOMD yak anglers. Is that what you want to call it? That? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we went down to Saint Jerome Creek. Saint Jerome's Creek. So we went down there in Ridge. Down to Ridge, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jerome's. fished the whole of that creek. Um, that's a big creek. There's a lot. It's huge. You saw how it opens yeah. and goes north um, yeah. once we got to the inlet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we couldn't get outside because it was blowing pretty hard southeast. and It was stacking that, up. Yeah, that, was, that would have been foolhardy. But it's not like we didn't find enough fish oh, inside. Yeah. I got into... Um, I, I got into to just two puppy drum, but they were both 15, 16-inch fish. And I think you got more than I did. Puppy drum? Yeah. Three. You, I only caught three. You caught three? Well, I only caught two. I, only, I, I was actually upset because I thought it was going to be my first trip. Your skunk. I was like, I've literally, once I found puppy drum, I've caught a puppy drum every time I've gone out. Mm-hmm. And yesterday was almost a skunk until like the last hour. I feel like the last hour really turned on. Well, I, I caught one early when we mm-hmm. first got there. Yeah, I was like, dang it. And then um, we went down almost to the mouth, and I was, I was lighting the perch up. Um, and I think Eric was lighting the perch up, too. Uh, yeah, the, my last hour of perch were ridiculous. Yeah, and it was it was. Uh, I'm talking some of the biggest perch I think I've ever seen. I'm talking about 12, 13, 14 mm-hmm. inch perch. It were just ridiculous. And I, I was throwing them back, and then Jerry's like, "You keeping perch?" And I'm like, ah, it wasn't "That's really. where the perch bite stops." <laughs> so I went, and I told him, I said, "As soon as you said we're keeping perch, <laughs> that's all over." <laughs> but I think I still put. I wasn't keeping like the really big ones. I didn't want to keep those fish, and I didn't want to keep the little ones. So I kept four sort of like, you know, nine, ten inch perch and I wasn't planning on, on eating them. They go straight into the um, crab keeper for crab food. So I do eventually end up eating them, I guess you could say that. <laughs> um, but man, what a great day. Cause then we went down to the beach right there at the yeah. inlet and beached the boats and, and had lunch and we were out there all day. Like it was a good getaway. It's like, it kind of like it Monday. Kind of like it was Monday when we yeah. went and we did like what? I think we were on the water a little bit earlier. Like 9.30-ish, 10 o'clock yeah. maybe? Yeah, just uh, before, I think it was 9.15 yeah. or something. We dropped in at Buzz's Marina, and, um, you know, it feels like it's a long way to the inlet, but, you it's know, not. it's it's not as far as I thought you, you you would described it. It didn't feel like it was as far as that. 
And there was so much fishing on the inside. That I caught my biggest fish like five, six hundred yards from the ramp. Right. Dang. I did too. That's I did too. It. it was it was like we paddled all the way down to the end of the creek and the biggest fish were way up in the top, which just got me thinking because I was down fishing my pots the other day and I saw something um, big move up inside the pier. Stick fish. No, no. It was it was definitely a swirl. Mm-hmm. And we don't typically get big striped bass up in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering if, because it felt to me like at the creek yesterday, those puppy drum were further up in. So I'm wondering if they may have traveled up at t- to the top end of my creek. I've always thought it would have been too far for them to go. Well, head on but out. I'm well, going to go. in bass mode now. Yeah, it's September 1st, so back into KBF. It's my birthday. Oh, it's not. No, it's in April. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, man, what a great day yesterday. Uh, you know, I was throwing a white twister tail gulp on a little quarter-ounce jig head. And I threw, I think I threw the same bait all day. I caught two little specks. I caught those two puppy drum. I caught lost count of the number of perch. I even I even hooked a spot. He pissed me off. Yeah. And, and sure it wasn't was, a croaker? <laughs> nope, it was not a croaker. He, he was like, I could feel him picking my bait up and dropping it and picking it up and dropping it how they'll do, and he's so small that I just started jerking the bait every time <laughs> I'd feel him, and I finally snagged him and sent him on his way. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I should have actually set, fed him to the crabs, too. Um, so, yeah, you're right. It's I'm back in September 1st. The September KBF challenge has kicked off, so I did uh, do some fresh water today. Um, didn't, I had a super busy morning. I wanted to get out earlier and I didn't cause I had so much stuff going on, but I was able to put, uh, four fish in the boat today. Uh, two little short bass, a pickerel, uh, which was a fairly decent pickerel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did a, a boat side release on him. I didn't even take him out of the water. And then right before I was so disappointed, I wasn't going to get a fish on the board today. And then right before I left, I picked up a uh, 15 and three quarter inch fish on a little it's yellow. Always right at the end. Yep. Yep. He was sitting on a lay down right at the edge of some big hydrilla. And uh, that, that spinner bait dropped at the right perfect spot and he fell victim. So that was my one yes. fish today. So it was a good one. Um, it was a pretty good week. Yeah. I'd say it was a good week. I do uh, want to give a shout out to Jerry. Yep. Who, with his Hobie kayak, pulled out a lawn chair. <laughs> That Pretty was much. cool. <laughs> his uh, his the seats on those things you can pull out and just set up camp right there on the beach. You know, we're sitting on our kayaks, hard plastic. Jerry's just sitting there in his chair. I know. He just pulled his pulled his kayak yeah. seat out and like folded out the little legs. Yeah. Even if they did sink down into the sand, so what? Yeah, he still so had yeah. he still had a comfortable yeah, seat yeah, to yeah, sit it was in. Comfortable. And I was getting all uncomfy sitting on the bow of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like my Hobie now? <laughs> it was a fun day. We just got Hobie envy. That's yeah. all it is. That's what it comes down to. I think both of us have Hobie envy. Yeah. I, I've said it before. I profess my love based upon YouTube videos. Uh, for the uh, Pro Angler 14, which will I don't, um, be my next boat. So I don't have Hobie Envy. I do like that 360. That that I, I think that's the one thing I like about it. I like, and I don't care if it's on Hobie or an Old Town. I think the setup of that is cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do love my native. I would love to be able to be bow into a bank and crab down it sideways. That that to me just feels like it's like the perfect. Oh, uh, you can do that uh, in a tidal body of water. <laughs> <laughs> I told you when I fished freshwater yeah. last week. I was like, "That sucks." Like that's I was like, <laughs> "Water is a movie." Like I set myself up for a drift, um, and I've learned how to like set my kayak upright and how to which way everything needs to face rudder wise, and it's just a nice controlled drift. Yeah, uh, see, it's not. I don't have Hobie envy. I just like the drive. I like the drive. The drive is I would ridiculous. like that in a native Titan. I I actually... I like the hull of the Pro Angler, though. So the one thing I like about your boat with the, the native is the size of the propel dri- of the drive. It doesn't seem to take up a lot of the boat space. You no, notice how my drive is... I feel your like it huge. takes up a lot of the cockpit. And, you know, I've, I've slid the seat back, and I actually scooch out and stretch my legs out to pedal the boat for long distances... Um, but still it feels like it's kind of like cramped, but I haven't had any problems with it. I mean, I stand up in the boat and fish all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's it for me this week. Um, um hopefully we're going to get another good weekend, although I think the heat's returning, but I think the yeah, weekend the is supposed stuff. to be cooler. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of fishing on the weekend, so believe it or not. No, I, I, as much as I like, I stayed out too long. Was the problem Sunday? Yeah. Um, 
But it started right off the bat with those trot line guys right in the creek. Yeah. If, um, I don't know. I like fishing on the weekdays, but you know, if I can get out on a on a weekend, like Jess was running while I was yeah. fishing, yep. I just stayed out too long. Um, but we'll see. I yeah. think I think we no the good fishing's coming. Oh, you know it. Um, you know it. The uh, hey, you want to do this or that? Yeah, I got two things on this week's this or that. Hope you're native. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just added a third. Hope you're right. native, Joey. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Um, okay, first item on this week's this or that. Joey, do you prefer Netflix or YouTube? I've been watching more YouTube lately. I've always been a big YouTuber. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've kind of... But I've been watching The West Wing with Jess. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff on YouTube. You know it. And you I, watch full movies now. I, I've been, like, legit addicted to YouTube lately. Because I've got all that stuff down in my barn now mm-hmm. that I'm trying to figure out how to work. It's like I want to watch a YouTube video on how to run a plasma you can cutter. Fix anything with YouTube, pretty much. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is my plasma cutter, and how do I make it work? And <laughs> try not to burn anything down. Okay, here's the, one of the five welders I have. How do I use a welder? How do I use? How do I? The, the, my biggest feat of late was how to attach the front loader to the John Deere tractor. Which I was able to figure out, which it may seem like it's really super simple, but you might you know. be a rancher. If yeah. You watch YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I think YouTube for me, although um, Netflix has been has got some strong contenders. It's it does. Um, I'm also it's easier for me to. I think it's easier to watch YouTube. I don't watch a lot of stuff in general because I'm either doing uh, this, working, or fishing. Let's, let's sidebar for a minute. Yeah. What's your preferred length of a YouTube video? If you look at something Ooh. and you look at it and you go, that looks interesting, but nah, too long. Or well, if you look yeah, at it and you something, that's what I'm saying. Too short. Um, uh, five to seven minutes. Five up, to seven? No, no, no. Is really good on some things, but like, all right, I've been watching a lot of like, um, a lot of these kayak people. Uh-huh. Like, I really love Greg Blanchard stuff. Um, he's 20 to 25 minutes, which is like the yeah. perfect length to... Um, and he covers everything in, uh, Christine Fisher or whatever. She's like right. that too. She's 20, 25 minutes. Um, Chad Hoover's usually around 10 to 15. I have a hard time watching him sometimes. Eh, it's cause he fishes a bonafide. <laughs> <laughs> um, you shouldn't say stuff like that. No, I'm joking. I, I sell bonafides. <laughs> Actually, like I said, I have two bot. Well, one might be spoken for after tomorrow, but, um, or the special edition. But that's, a, that's a tough choice between those two boats. The 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 SS one oh seven and the RS one twenty seven. Yeah. Um I would want the one twenty seven for that extra length, but I want the features of the SS boat. Or isn't that a little more so the S- SS one twenty seven and one oh seven are SS's. Yeah. No, but you, you said you have an R S there's an R S one seventeen, which but is like what my dad you has. have com- you have coming in an R S one seventeen. You have a one okay. okay. R S one seventeen and SS one oh seven. Right. Both so, shorter boats. Both shorter boats? Yeah. There's features I like of both. I wouldn't say I wanted one more than the other. Okay. But the 127 is like the Mac Daddy. Yeah, that's, that's I the love one I the front. I, I you see the you... front storage on that thing? Yeah. yeah. You can. It goes both ways. Yeah. Um, and you can the way you can... It's set up to store stuff down into it. So I thought you had a 127. Like a SS I wish. One, I thought you had an SS-127. And I do RS. have an SS-127 coming in November. And it is somewhat of a secret right now as far as the way it looks. Not anymore. Well, I no, can say that. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, it's a limited edition and the native is native and bonafide are made in the same factory and now they're brother sister companies. Right. Um, they're doing a run of native Slayer Maxes and the SS-127s. Oh. In this, in this new thing they're, they're launching. Um, so we're going to pick up some of them. Uh, you got. I mean, if you want to put yourself big on the map, you just got to start committing to some of this stuff. See, that's that's those bonafides. I think are the perfect boats to put a motor on. Yeah, say by the time you you could put a torpedo and buy the boat, I mean you're, you're still half the price of a Hobie yeah. <laughs> Pro. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, a Titan is you know three thousand dollars, but yeah, yeah. Um, What's going on outside, a little, uh, <laughs> little moped. <laughs> um, man, we really went on a tangent, but uh, it's okay. there's some, so like Yeti Premier is a Yeti has some really cool, um, uh, the Yeti, uh, what the heck are they called? Um, they got some nice little five to seven minute clips yeah. that are really cool. You wish they were longer, but you almost feel like they did it right with the time. So it varies. Yeah. A lot of the like, channels I watched are not super long. So for me, it's like once I get used to a channel, once I'm, once I'm invested in a channel 
And once I'm invested, I can do, I can stomach an 18, 20 minute mm-hmm. video. Yeah. Much more than that. I'm like, you know, but like coming out the box, if mm-hmm. I'm just like, I've never watched somebody's videos before and it's 25 minutes, I'm not investing 25 yeah. minutes in that. So like 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes, that's like the sweet spot for mm-hmm. me. But you know, at what point do they actually, you know, start well, the, doing something different? The I don't good know. thing is, is I think it's always good to always wish you could watch more. Right. Um, and you don't want to get bored if it's too long. So right. there's a balance of that. Right, 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 right. So, but then if someone does it right, they can keep you entertained for 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's not boring. F- honestly, watching fishing can get very boring. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same <laughs> crap. Oh, you, you caught a fish or you didn't. Sometimes when I'm making uh, videos, I feel like that too. I feel it's like, you know, it's like, wow, they're going to watch me catch more bass and more snakehead. And like, but, you know, people get a kick out of it. They want to see what you're doing oh, yeah. different. So, I, I don't know. I'll just keep like at it until people up, tell like me to stop. Like people do it. And, no. uh, so, do you prefer, Joey, morning fishing or evening fishing? Mm. I know. I, I, I forgot what I said earlier. Like, I don't want to contradict myself. I like the morning lately because it's, you don't have, I mean, I can walk down to the water. So, yeah. I don't have to, enough. If I want to fish here, I'm not getting up at four o'clock to drive an hour. Yeah, to yeah. you know make a five whatever sunrise. It's that makes six a big thirty difference. here, and I think five forty five right now is first somewhat around first light where it's manageable to get in the creek and see. And okay. I'll still put my light up, and you're yeah. legally supposed to have your your white light till like sunrise. But um, I like the evening, but it, obviously everyone knows I, I I fish a lot in the evenings, and I fish way into the evenings. Yeah. Um. So, I don't even know how to answer that one. <laughs> I, I guess basically, I think what I heard you just say was depends upon the time of the year. Yeah, you know, I've always found uh, like I'm not a morning I, person either. I, I'm not much of a morning person either, but or evening. Person. Um, I I hate that hour drive to get somewhere to fish at that time of morning. That's mm-hmm. that's just that that to me just drives me nuts. Yeah, and then you feel like you know you you get you jump on the water and then you're like you're like racing the clock. Mm-hmm. To try to get as much fishing in oh, before, yeah. you know, whatever that weird time is where you consider it, okay, it's no longer that magic hour mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, there, I feel like there's a lot of pressure there. Yeah. And I enjoy going over on an afternoon. It feels like, you know, you've worked the day, you, you go over sort of late in the day, and you get to fish through the dinner hour. And I don't know, I kind of enjoy that. I think it's just the. Yeah. I, I, for I some, mean, for me, I kind of prefer that. I, I think. Except for that time of year, like I said, we were talking about earlier, where the sun doesn't set until like nine ten, and you're yeah. legit like on the water and not getting home until yeah. like eleven o'clock at night. So that that for me is so it would be sort of like the one caveat to that, or the one like exception to that rule. Yeah, and it's yeah, I know it's tough. I, uh, the evening's fun. Say so how's it, how's it going with the S O M D yak anglers? Does, does um, actually check what's going on? On I thought I bought. I actually don't know. I went on GoDaddy buying the domain this morning. Um, I need to start making a post. We started. I put it out on one of the kayak groups, and I need to actually focus on uh, blowing it up. Uh, we started getting some followers. Oh, so yeah, there's there's some stuff here there going is on. A page and a group. The page will just kind of be the main hub, and the group will be you know chatting. The group has seven members at this point. Ooh. And I barely put it out. Um, Some people just followed it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then the SOMD Yak, and the page, I'm not sure exactly how you're going to use those two. I, I know how they should be used different. Yeah. There's 17 people that like the page. Yeah. So cool. One is the central hub. The group is more of a uh, you know, community a- Aspect yeah. of it. Nice, yeah. nice. So, SMD Yak, S O M D Yak Anglers. I'll put links in the show notes or the description. Yeah, you don't have to be once a again. Full S O M D or. No. Um, I don't no. want people from all over. I don't want thousands of people on there. No, because that kind of <laughs> defeats the purpose. Do you have any sort of like filters on the front end where if somebody wants to join, they have to ask their questions no, or I something need, like that? I think I did set that. No, you signed up, did you? I don't think I did anything, but yeah. I didn't know if you put me in some kind of different or something. I think I so invited you, so I think it... Maybe that makes a difference. That could actually make a difference. Well, let me delete you and then come back. <laughs> and then I'll try again. Um, Test it. Test it. Yeah, Eric asked me what the goal of that was yesterday, and I kind of explained it as... Uh, especially there's a lot of new people 
into kayaking and kayak fishing lately mm-hmm. with all this. I think it's a good hub for resources. People to ask questions, not to feel... Cause, uh, some people are even afraid to call the store about simple kayak questions. They're going to go on mm. and ask the Facebook group first, and you're going to get 400 wrong answers, no offense. Because I had people going off on uh, ratchet straps and just really yanking on kayaks the other day. I was like, no, like, that's what cinch straps are for. I mean, I've literally seen people break stuff because you, you don't realize how much you get behind with a ratchet strap. Oh, Something yeah. simple as that. Um, so I feel like I have a good resource to chime in on stuff there. Yeah. Um, people are always on Facebook. Yeah. I think it'd be fun eventually, like when St. Mary's Lake opens up or like go to like, like St. Jerome's. I meet up a little friendly tournament. Um, nothing big, but it's, I mean, it was fun going out with like four of us yesterday and yeah, you could was. fish all over. Yeah, it was. And it was a lot of fun. We could all fish the same spot and catch different things and we have different styles and everyone's got a different technique of how they do it. Yeah. Um, you I got mean, any? I'm the best there is, so just yeah. That's Ricky Bobby Cook. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got any fishing on your radar for this week? Uh, Tony, tomorrow, um, and then I would like to. Uh, I need to get my dad out uh, this week. Um, we're trying to figure out with his busy schedule and yeah, and you got stuff going on too, and stuff going on there. Yeah. So um, maybe that might be a Saturday, probably a Sunday morning. It's Labor mm-hmm. Day weekend though. Well, what are the know, creeks going to be wondered, like? I wondered about that. It is a holiday weekend, isn't I'm it? Not, uh, one day I am spending the day with my wife, so I'm not fishing. I think I'm going to go. Um, I will be out. Jerry and I were talking about going back down to St. George. Oh, yeah. Um, on Thursday, because he's got a weird work schedule this week. So I think we were talking about oh, Yeah, he's that. back to work. Yeah. Um, so that's it. that's it for me. And then I'll probably be chasing bass. You know, for the rest of the month. <laughs> Although yeah, I'm, the 21st, right? I'm, I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm legit. Like these puppy drum are so, they're such a beautiful fish. I, yeah, I I'm, can't get over how gorgeous they are. I'm very fortunate that from where I can see from a pier, I can catch buttloads yeah. of them. Yeah. And luckily I'm not having to travel high and low and. You know what, you know what I've thought this whole season is so cool is that you started talking about getting on redfish and getting on, on those fish. Mm-hmm. Like. Way, way back in the spring, you were That's like been, psyched about it, yeah. and then all of a sudden they showed up, and they're legit like not normally here. <laughs> no, not like this. <laughs> and it's like um, it's like you were like you were like so early to the bandwagon. Oh, on I, that I want to I want to be dude. that guy. Like <laughs> you know. I, no. And uh, that's my goal. I want to be that dude. That was I'm, awesome. I'm to the point now where yeah, my friend Tony's coming down for that's it. Awesome. That is so cool. I, I do want to. I'll probably have a lot to talk about next week after I fish with Tony. Tony's one of the best fly fishermen I've. I mean, I've known Tony since like sixteen in CCA stuff, and um, we've done a lot of cool stuff together. But yeah. he was telling me he's been interested in how the bay has changed, but he does conservation for a living. He was saying that some of his guys, there's a couple of guides that are in the in the association that are conservation dudes too, saying how between hurricanes and and the way everything gets pushed around. Oh, I'm really going to butcher this, and I shouldn't have even started this. He was saying, like, we're in this, there's two different runs of what happens, and we're only in the first part with these redfish being here. And, and it comes in phases, and there'll be an even bigger push next year, by the way, science works and how it looks. So we're going to get another run of the fish that are this size next year, and they grow so fast mm-hmm. that he said, the fish that are here now will be back, and your 14, 15-inch fish will be the low 20s now. Oh, he said that's how the Carolinas started and the way that everything's moving north and the storms and everything we have are actually doing really well for the fisheries and it's flush and water and these redfish thrive on it and Dude, they come in exciting. waves and he says it's going to like this isn't going away hopefully but the way science looks it's only going to get better. For that us. is awesome. That is yeah. so awesome. To so hear. He said yeah it's just going to double next year and, and these fish grow so fast. That that is and they're probably one of the fastest growing fish. That's probably one of the most exciting things I've heard. Yeah, in I a got, long he was telling time. me that when I was waiting for our food tonight. Yeah, he's like, man, like you, you, you're only getting the start of it all. That is like, so I'm, cool. Yeah, that is so cool. If we had big runs, if able to just go oh. out and like slay some twenty plus inch puppy drum. Oh, oh my goodness, man, I, I will get divorced. I will never be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and not not saying I want to. I'm just, no, yeah, yeah, no, just gonna, oh my god, Joey! <laughs> no, you just need to get her a boat. <laughs> oh, she we um she actually used my native a couple times this year. Yeah, just we just went out paddling. 
Uh, you got anything else before we shut it no, down? No. Oh, like I said, it'll be ten thirty by the time I stop talking. We're closing in on our yeah. hour window, and we you did know, good at that. Though. That's the number. We're getting really good at it. Yeah. Um, thanks everybody for watching and for listening. Um, again, the podcast can be found just about everywhere. Uh, you download your favorite podcasts. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash angler magazine Chesapeake on Instagram at Chesapeake Angler. And you can find me personally at BN Range. Joey, how can they get in touch with you? At Joey Sikorsky24 or at Pack Paddles. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Chesapeake Angler. And, of course, you can read the e-magazine online at ChesapeakeAnglerMag.com. Mm. And then you can pick up the print version of the magazine all over. Everywhere. Anywhere. On my kitchen table. Anywhere. You I just think you can see that on the camera, right? I have no... Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'll click yeah, on it. That's why I threw it down there. Yes, you can, oh, actually. Yeah, it's the hot dog. It beats a couple of whoopie pies on the there table. There it is. And I don't my, know if it doesn't beat that. Dirty, uh, here at the end of the podcast, I'll get my dirty... Yeah, I realize my, after the bike, my, when I had all the trash up. My, <laughs> my, my whoopie pie wrapper and my... <laughs> they got out of the way. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Uh, what do I have to do? And stream... And...